Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Hey, this is the day that the Lord have made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to you, and thank you so much for tuning in in the backyard with Pastor Perryman. Hey, as you can see, we're not in the backyard again. We have to come back inside simply because, uh, man, uh, the wind is blowing too hard, so we had to come back inside today. But nevertheless, we are still here today. So y'all do me a favor. Make sure you share, you like, you tag, you invite. Hey, start a watch party. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Today is going to be a beautiful day. It's an exciting day. It's a lovely day, man, because it's a Thursday. So listen, y'all share, y'all like, y'all tag, y'all invite. Start a watch party. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman, all right? Hey, shout out to my wife, Pastor Sophia, who's on today. My beautiful daughter, Ashley Perryman, is on today. Shout out to my cousin, Robert Perryman. Shout out to Miss Shirley Powell this morning. Hey, shout out to Miss Jennifer Smith, who's on today. Good to see you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I appreciate every one of you. Miss Bambi is on this morning. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for being on today. Listen, y'all do me a favor. Share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. All right, shout out to Miss Miss uh, Shamika Bogard, who's rocking with us this morning, too. So again, y'all share, y'all like, y'all tag, y'all invite. Start a watch party. Get other people to come on and be a part of it in the backyard with Pastor Perryman. Hey, I'm going to get some of this amazing coffee that my wife made. So make sure you get some, uh, <laughs> uncle, <laughs> and make sure you get <laughs> some coffee, some water, some juice, your tea, whatever you're drinking this morning, you get it. <laughs> I love you, Shabika. <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Frederick Milner, who's on, Miss Kelly Johnson, who's on today. Thank you so much for being on today. I appreciate y'all. Listen, uh, I was going to, you know, promote Miss Shamika getting married, somebody, you know, reaching out to getting married. Now I'm going to have to block all of that. <laughs> Let me get some of this amazing coffee. But again, y'all share like tag. Everybody start a watch party, get other people to come over and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perry. Shout out to Miss Ruth Landaverde. Shout out to Tony Johnson, who's on today as well. <laughs> Shamika already got me rolling this morning. <laughs> Let's get to it. We're going to have a great time today. Shout out to Miss Teresa Wells, who's on as well. <laughs> well, let's get to it today. You know, a number of years ago, I was working for the Marriott Hotel. And, uh, man, when it came down to the last year of me being there, went through so much hell. It just seemed like every day there was something, there was something going on with management. I mean, it was just bad for me. It, it was as if uh, the devil was after me every step of the way. It was a frustrating year for me. Uh, man, it was just terrible for me. i never forget that I get called into the office one day about something I had no clue about. They tried to bring me up. Uh, I don't. I almost wanted to say charger, but they wanted to try to dismiss me and fire me by bringing accusations against me to saying that I was speaking against homosexuals on the job. Now, you got to remember there's this one, uh, well, I paint a picture of this. There's this one boss that I have. He's about five foot one, maybe five foot two. He's got this little man complex and he's doing all he can to get rid of me to the point he's making up stories. So here I am, I'm being brought into the office and I'm sitting down and they're saying to me that the report is that you are speaking against uh, people and their lifestyle on the job. I go, what do you mean? I haven't spoken against anybody in their lifestyle on the job. And the guy said, well, this is the report that we have. And he had this report written up and everything. And I said, well, if somebody's accusing me, then I need I have the right to confront my accuser. So bring the person in who they say that I've spoken against. So they end up getting this guy, they bring him into the office while I'm there. And the guy, they read the report to him. And the guy says, that's not true. Uh, Curtis has never spoken to me like that. He's never been disrespectful to me or dishonorable to me. He's never done any of that. What he's always done is help me when I needed help. And he's always been there for me. And so the, the owner, the boss at this point is looking at this and he goes, so these accusations are not true? He goes, no, they're not true. This never happened. So now all of a sudden I go out of this meeting and as I'm walking out of the meeting, I see the boss, see my boss walking in. And I look at him and he looked at me. I knew he was the one that tried to set it up. When he goes into the office and realizes that I am not fired because the accusations is false, he comes back into one of his offices, he slams his door, he's upset, and he's angry that he couldn't get me fired. 
and I looked at him. Now I developed this angry attitude toward him that I really want to smack you. I'm a pastor at this moment. I really want to smack you. I really want to hit you because you just came in here lying on me and you're trying to get me fired. A few months later, I'm no longer on the job anymore. Somehow or another, I had to come back up there to the hotel for something. And as I'm walking down the hotel to the ballrooms, he sees me and he comes down and here is the test. He comes down and he's in my space. He wants to shake my hand and he's not realizing that I'm about to punch you in the face. And it had to dawn on me at this moment that what he meant for evil, God meant for good. The devil tried it, but it didn't work. He tried to get you fired, but it didn't work. I had to catch myself because scripture became apparent to me at that moment. I need many of you to understand that the devil has tried to kill you night and day. He's done everything in his power to derail your destiny. He's done everything in his power to deny your promotion. He's done everything in his power to deny you from getting to the next level in your life. He's done everything in his power to stop you. But you are still here. You are still alive. You are still moving. You are still going forward. He's done everything that he could do since you were a child to deny you the right that you have to become all that God wanted you to be. He's done all that he could to stop you and to block you. For some of you, he's given you a death sentence by giving you, uh, uh, he's given you a, a, a health scare. And to you, it's been a death sentence. And you looked at your situation and saying, how am I going to make it out of this? For some of you, he attacked you with the coronavirus and you've been trying to figure out how am I going to make it out of this? For others of you, he attacked you with cancer and you've been trying to figure out how am I going to make it out of this? For others of you, you've gone through hell and relationships. You've gone through some difficult times. You've gone through this. You've been fighting this and fighting through that. You've been trying to figure out how in the world am I going to make it through this? And the reality is God always shows up and shows out. He always shows up and pulls you out. He always shows up and gives you a life preserver and a life lifeline that drags you out of the muck and the miry clay. So you have to say, devil, you tried it, but it did not work. You gave me a bad doctor's report, but I believe the word of God. And it did not work. You tried to you tried to evict me out of my home and you tried to get rid of my place. And you tried to put me in a situation where I would not have a place to live. But devil, it did not work. You allowed God to show up and show out in my life and reveal himself to me on a whole nother level. Devil, it did not work. For some of you, the devil tried to take you out even in car accidents. For some of you, the devil tried to take you out uh, uh, in, in abusive relationships. But you made it through. You came out of this situation. You came out of this circumstance. And you have to tell the devil, devil, you tried it, but it did not work. See, listen to this. When you start to say, devil, you tried it, but it did not work, you are literally testifying of the delivering power of God. So what you have to start doing now is talk about what God has done for you. Talk about how he brought you out of the abusive relationship. Talk, you, talk about how he delivered you from sickness and disease. Talk about how when they tried to block your promotion, he was the one who opened up a door for you to get one anyway. You ought to talk about how they closed doors on you. They meant it for evil. They got you fired, but all it did was push you into the place that you were supposed to be in life. They meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And the Bible said he meant it to save much people alive. May I tell you today that the devil cannot take you out without your your permission. The devil cannot take you out because he won't to. He has tried it on so many different occasions to, de to deny you your promotion, to block you from this, to kill you. He's tried everything. If he couldn't kill you, he tried to steal from you. If he couldn't steal from you, he tried to destroy you. He tried to do all of these things to you, but it did not work. You still became what God has called you to be. For some of you, you say, but pastor, I ain't made it yet. You just can't see, baby. You can't see like you're supposed to. If you start to look at yourself from the perspective of God, you will see that there's more to you than meets the eye. You will see that you are bigger and better and greater than what the world can see. There's something on the inside of you that makes the devil want to come after you. You got to sit down and do an evaluation of yourself and say, man, he coming after me for what? It's because you got something to offer. That's why he's coming after you. He's coming after you because there's more to you than meets the eye. He's coming after you because you are something that can transform the lives of people. This is why you have to hold your faith. You have to stand your ground. You got to stay connected. You got to stay committed. You got to keep the faith. You got to keep saying that for God I live and for God I'll die. I will not allow the enemy to take me out today. He meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. 
And the Bible says to save much people alive. That's in Genesis chapter number 50. Listen to this. The devil does not know the full plan of God. He has a thought process about it, but he doesn't know the plan of God. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 that had the devil known the full detail and the full story, the full plan of what God was doing, he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. I need you to get this. Had the devil known, he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. See, the devil tried it, but it didn't work. He thought that his plan was working. Can you imagine the Bible tells us in the book of Psalms that the book of Psalms talks about Jesus being crucified on the cross. And in the book of Psalms, it talks about the bulls of Bashan are dancing around Jesus while he's dying on the cross. In other words, the writer of the book of Psalms gives you and I a revelation and an understanding now of what's taking place in the spirit. And here Jesus is dying on the cross. He takes us beyond the people who are out there watching him down the cross, but he shows us demonic spirits who are celebrating the death of Jesus. And it's because that they had no full understanding and no full revelation of what took place and what was taking place in all of this. The Bible said that it was good that Paul, Paul says it like this, it was good that I was afflicted. Scripture tells us like this, that God now was excited that Jesus was bruised, battered, and broken for our sake. He was excited about it. And the reason that he was excited about it is because his plan was coming into fruition. The full manifestation of God's plan was coming into fruition. And what was that? Jesus paid the price for you and I. He paid the price for our sins on Calvary's cross. And guess what he did? It opened up a doorway for you and I to now become the righteousness of God. So you ought to be happy happy that Jesus died on the cross. You ought to be happy that the devil didn't understand the plan of God. You ought to be happy that God brought the plan into full fruition because had it not been for Jesus' death on the cross, you and I would not be saved today. I don't know about you, but I'm as grateful as grateful can get. I'm grateful to be saved today. I'm grateful to be alive today. I'm grateful that he went to the cross for me because what the devil meant for evil, God meant it for good to save much people alive. The devil meant it to kill you, but he could not do it. <laughs> it's important for you to understand this. It's important for you to get this, get this revelation in your spirit. <laughs> the devil tried it, but it didn't work. For some of you, you barely made it out of an abusive relationship. Somehow or another, the devil took on sheep clothing and gussied himself up, like my grandmother used to say, gussied himself up, made himself look good and made himself look appealing to you. And he allured you and drew you in and you was attracted to the bad boy. That's your thing. That's your style. That's your get down. I like this right here. Oh my God. You know, bad boys, they're a little bit of rebel and you know, they got this going on and they can do this and, and you know, all of this. And I'll be, I'll be a little candid just a little bit. You know, I know Miss Jennifer Smith and Miss Diane King may be wagging, so I'll be a candid just a little bit. Pastor, he may be able to make love real good. I like this dude. I like this dude. But you didn't realize that that bad boy image and that bad boy mentality was going to do something to you later. But you were enticed by it. You were allured by it. And you got caught up in it. And all of a sudden, the bad boy turned bad against you. Abused you when you did nothing wrong. You deserve nothing. You didn't deserve to be abused like that. You didn't deserve to be talked to like that. You didn't deserve to be ridiculed, put down, or ostracized. You didn't deserve none of that. But all of a sudden now you're going through this. Family members tried to talk you out of this relationship and you still hung on in there. Family members warned you, friends warned you in the beginning that he was no good, but you hung on in there anyway. Because perhaps, Pastor, he'll change. I love him. I love him. He loves me. And you even had this thought in your head. He only hit me because he loved me. And the reality is he hit you because he was just a terrible individual. There was some insecurity things going on on the inside of him. And it took it out on you. And all of a sudden, you finally got to a point that you start to realize that this ain't good for me. This ain't healthy for me. This ain't the place for me. And so you left in the spirit before you physically left in the natural. And the reason that you didn't leave in the natural is because you were really working on a plan. And here's what God did. He gave you an open door to leave this relationship. You knew beyond a shadow of a doubt. Had this dude knew where you were, he'd have took your life. You knew beyond a shadow of a doubt. Had this dude been able to find you, he'd have took your life. You knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that had God not showed up and rescued you, you probably may not be alive today. But you ought to be grateful that the Lord brought you out of this situation. The devil tried it, but look at where you are today. You're a better woman today because 
that God showed up and showed out in your life. You are a better individual today. You have compassion on the inside of you. You have compassion for the people who are going through for this. with this. You'll give up everything that you have just to help this individual because you've been there. You've experienced this before in your life. And now all of a sudden now, you can look back on it and you can say, if it had not been for the Lord <laughs> who was on my side, I might be dead and in my grave today. Had it not been for the Lord who was on my side, I really don't know where I'd be today. Had it not been for the Lord who showed up and showed out in a moment of my life, I don't know where I'd be today. Had it not been for the Lord, I would not be where I am today. And that's why you got to be grateful. See, the devil tried it, but it didn't work. He tried it but it didn't work. He tried to beat destiny out of you. He tried to beat inheritance out of you. He tried it. He tried to belittle you. He tried to put you down. He tried to intimidate you. I'm talking to some women today who've been abusive today. I'm not, I don't know why I'm talking to you, but, but I'm trying to help you get your self-esteem back. You were belittled. You were battered. You were bruised. You were talking down to. You were ostracized. You were criticized. Nothing that you did was enough. You carry this stuff around on you for many years and you're wondering, am I good enough? You're wondering, will I be enough for him? Will I be enough for the next man that comes in my life? Do I have anything to offer the next man? You are even criticizing the way that you look. You are more harder on your looks than anybody else is. You're finding every flaw. You're finding every stretch mark. You're looking at yourself and talking about, I gained some weight here. I gained weight in my thighs. Gained it in my, in my side. I gained it around the way. I got a little weight up here. you criticizing and ostracizing you constantly because of what you've been through. May I tell you today that the devil tried it and it didn't work? How you know it didn't work? Pastor, you are still alive. You are still here. You are still alive. Any day above ground is a good day. You are still a beautiful woman. You may have put on some pounds, but you're still beautiful. How, how you know I'm still beautiful, Pastor? Well, let me tell you, every time you look at yourself in the mirror, you need to look and see that God created you. You were created in the image and the likeness of God. As you get older, you're going to gain some weight. As you get older, some wrinkles going to form. As you gain some weight, some stretch marks going to come. As you have children, some stretch marks going to come. Now, here's what you got to do. You got to start looking at yourself from a different perspective and say, I may have a stretch mark here, may have one there, may have some weight over here, may have some weight over there, but guess who I am? I am still the person who's fearfully and wonderfully made in the eyesight of God. Today is the day you get your you get your swag back. Today is the day you get your confidence back. Today is the day you get your walk back. Today is the day that you get everything back that you lost. You get it back today. I'm talking to you this morning. Get it back today. Get it back today. Don't you let the devil lord over your life another day in your life. Don't you let him control you another day in your life. You get your swag back. You get it back. You are created in the image of God. The devil has tried it, but it didn't work. How you know it's not working, Pastor? Because I am your emancipator today. I'm the one who's showing up to liberate you and to free you this morning. Today is the day that you walk away from the bondage of fear. Today is the day you come out of this situation. Maybe you're a man who's watching me today and... You've been through some hellish things in your life, man. You've been criticized and ostracized by family members, and they put you down and told you you were the black sheep of the family. You were never going to be anything, and you were never going to make it, and you believed it. Well, today is the day you get liberated, too. Today is the day that you break through, that you break, you break and destroy the shackles that have held you bound all of these years. The devil meant it for evil. But God meant it for good to save much people alive. Guess what he's done inside of you? He's unlocked greatness on the inside of you. He's reaching deep down in you and pulling out of you that which is great. And you got to realize today that you are great. You are great. You may not have been the best father in the world. You may have had many women in your life trying to figure out who you are. People don't understand. For men who are always running around trying to fight, trying to be involved with a lot of other women, they're not doing that to make themselves look good. Let me tell you, they're not doing that to make themselves look good. They're not doing that to say, look at all the women I got. These are hurting men who are insecure on the inside. 
and they are trying to find stability. They're trying to find who they are and they're doing it by trying to be involved with all of these women. It's about getting their confidence back. How you know this, Pastor? Because I was that dude. I was there. I'm telling you, any man that's got many women in his life is never happy because they're always bickering, always complaining. You're trying to figure out how you're going to do this with this one. How you're going to take care of this one and this, this, and that. The person is not trying to belittle you, but what they're doing is trying to find themselves. It's something going on on the inside of them. But most people don't understand this and men don't ever come out and say, this is where I am. This is the reason that I had multiple women. It's because they were trying to find love themselves. They were trying to figure out who they were. And for some of us, we dropped the ball on many occasions and we did some things that were not right, that were not good. The difference with me is I'm just bold enough to say it. I've been through the hell and high water. I've been through the storm and the rain. I've been that man who had multiple women on the side. I've been that man that had children here, children here, and children there, and children over here. I've been that dude. But guess who I am now? I'm a new creature in Christ who's not going back to that lifestyle ever again in life because I know who I am today. I know what God has made me. The devil tried to make me realize, tried to make me think that I was nothing and nobody. But when I came to Jesus... The, the psalmist said, I came to Jesus just as I was, weary, wounded, and sad. But I found in him a resting place. And I'm glad today when I came to Jesus, I understood who I was now. I understood the confidence that he wanted me to have. I understood that I was a new creature in him. I understood that the devil was trying to kill me all the days of my life. But now I found life in God today. I, I realized there's something different. For some of you, you need to understand that, that the devil meant to kill you. He tried it, but it didn't work. It, it didn't work. It didn't work. It did not work. It didn't work. And for some of you saying, Pastor, I'm still going through some stuff. You alive, baby. It didn't work. It didn't work. You still got your opportunity. You still got a chance. You can still become what you want to be. You can still be what God wants you to be. You can still make a difference in life. You can still transform the lives of other people. You can still do it. See, your experiences is what's going to bring you to your next level. Watch now. When the Bible speaks in the book of James, in James chapter 1, I believe it is, it says, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who give it to all men liberally and upbraid him not. All right. So when the Bible speaks of this wisdom, this wisdom, part of this, this wisdom is called Sophia. It's really wisdom that comes from God. It's wisdom that's come, that, that, that really is downloaded from God. But when you go deeper into the study of it, it tells us that this wisdom is more than the wisdom that has been downloaded from God. But this wisdom is also called sunesis. This wisdom being called sunesis is wisdom that you gain through experiences. So watch now. So when God says, if any man like wisdom, let him ask of God who give it to all men liberally and upbraid him not. So here's what he says. Go back into the analogs of your mind. Remember where God has brought you from. Remember that God delivered you. Remember that God brought you out of this. Remember that the devil tried to take you out, but God brought you out. You have to remember. You have to go in the analogs of your mind and remember how when you didn't have nothing, God showed up and blessed you. When you didn't have a job, he still sustained you. When you signed up, when you filled out an application, you got a job that you did not qualify for. You, when, you, when he walked out on you, when she left you, God still took care of you. He still brought you out. He still blessed you. He still added to your life. He still gave you everything that you needed. And he did it now because he shows you the experiences that you've had in life. And many of you do not recall the experiences that you've had. You've forgotten what he's done for you. You forgot that he brought you out. You forgot that he brought you through. You forgot that he brought you into. <laughs> see, see, some of y'all say, Pastor, you, you go a little further. See, I learned that. I learned it in the floor kind of high school. Those are called preparation phrasing. I learned it from being in Miss Townsend class. You know, I didn't get a chance to go to Miss Ollie, Mr. Ollie's class like Miss Sheila Robin them. But I did. I did go. I did go to school, so I learned this too. Miss Phillips class and Miss and Miss Miss, Miss Townsend class that those are prepositional phrases. That here's what God does. He brings you out of something, and He brings you into. He brings you out into. You forgot that God delivered you out of something, and He delivered you to something. Well, what did He deliver you out? For some of you, He delivered you out of addiction. For others of you, He delivered you. He delivered you out of a broken relationship. He delivered you out of a broken marriage. He delivered you out of an abusive relationship. He delivered you out of poverty. He brought you out, but he brought you into the wealthy place. The wealthy place 
is the place where he abides at. He brought you out of death and he brought you to life. He, he brought you from death's door and he brought you to God's door. He brought you out of some stuff and he brought you into the right place. And many of you have forgotten. You got to think about what he's done for you. For you single mothers who are watching me today and you didn't know how you was going to make it. <laughs> he still showed up for you. He still blessed you. See, the devil meant it for evil. He thought that he was going to destroy your child by walking out on your child. But he did not know that that was going to unlock something on the inside of you that was going to really talk to your child and tell your child that he can make it and she can make it and they can become greater. He unlocked something on the inside. See, the devil launched this coronavirus thinking that he was going to destroy the works of God. <laughs> But the reality is he didn't destroy the works of God. He just executed the plan of God and didn't know it. What's the plan of God? Well, people now are being quarantined where they can't do nothing but get to know God on another level again. Well, people can't do anything but get to know their family members again. Well, people can't do anything now but to save their money because you can't even spend your money like you used to. <laughs> even if you do get a stimulus check, you can't spend it nowhere. You can't do nothing but pay your bills. For some of you, your credit score is going to go up because <laughs> you can't do anything else <laughs> but pay your bills. You can't go shopping. You can't go to the movies. You can't do this. You can't do that. You quarantine. And the plan of God is right where it's supposed to be. For many, God is unlocking creativity on the inside of you. That thing that was once on the inside of you that could not come out, now all of a sudden the creativity is coming out of you now. You, for some of you, books are going to be written that's going to change the next generation because you're quarantined. You can't do anything else. For some of you, you're going to learn how to deal with yourself because you're quarantined. You, don't, you never was able to confront you, and now you're going to learn to confront yourself. For some of you, you're going to learn to be parents all over again because your children now are at home. They're not in school anymore. You can't push them off to school anymore. You're going to have to learn how to parent them all over again. You're going to have to learn to get on Google and help them with their homework because ain't nobody else to help them do it. You will have to learn how to do this all over again. And that's the place that God wants you at right now. You are in, You may think that this is bad. It is not bad. The devil meant this thing for evil, but it is not evil. It's to save much people alive. What if, what if he didn't quarantine you today? You might have been one of the 40 people who went home to be with the Lord from the coronavirus on yesterday just in LA alone. You have to think that the devil tried this, but it didn't work. For some of you, you're going to be entrepreneurs in this season. You're going to be entrepreneurs like never before. For some of you, you're going to get back to the basics. You're going to learn how to paint your own toenails because you did it when you was in school, when you didn't have no money. You painted your own toenails. You painted your own fingernails. You're going to get back to it. You're going to become so creative that you ain't going to need Shaolin them at the, at, the, at the place. You're not going to need them no more. You're going to learn how to file your own toenails. You're going to have to learn. You're going to learn to get your own self a pedicure and you're going to save some money because you're going to learn how to do it. I'm talking to somebody today, the creativity is about to come out of you like never before. But some of you men, you're going to learn to cut your hair all over again. You're going to learn to do it again yourself and save this money because you ain't got no choice. You got no choice. You're quarantined now. You can't even go nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. You're going to learn how to do this thing all over again. <laughs> the devil meant it for evil. God meant it for good. He's saving much people alive. And you are part of the group that he's saving today. That's my time today. I pray y'all will bless y'all with encourage today. Man, don't let the devil make you think that you don't have nothing to offer, that you can't be nothing, that you can't be, go anywhere, that you can't just be anything. Don't let the devil talk to you like that. He tried it, but it didn't work. So when you get to heaven, you're going to find out how many times devil was at your door. You're going to find that out. You're going to find out when you get to heaven how many times death was at your door and God stopped him? That the devil tried to kill some of you at night. For some of you, he tried to kill you while you were walking down the street. For others of you, he tried to kill you on the job and you didn't even know it. He tried to do it. Listen, the devil tried it, but it did not work. I feel led to talk to some people who were bound by drugs. And you're doing all that you can to really prove to people that you are totally free. You've been doing this for years. You've been trying to prove for years that you're free. 
and that you're not you're not that person anymore. Maybe you were a person who were on meth, or maybe you used crack cocaine, or maybe you were you were strung out on weed or cocaine, or whatever it is, you were strung out on the drugs. Maybe maybe you tried it. Maybe, maybe you were strung out on it, and you were really out there. And family members don't really seem to trust you much. And you've been trying to fight your way back and get people to trust you. you even in church today. I don't know who you are, but you're even in church today, and people still won't receive you for who you really are. You, you, you do all that you can to prove that that's not you anymore. And it seems like not that many people are receiving you, especially family members. May I tell you today to stop trying to please everybody? Stop trying to get everybody to look at you the right way. People are not going to look at you the right way. That's their business. But you get your confidence back and your self-esteem back. You get it back. You're battling secretly on the inside of you. You, you, you take a lot of pictures. You, 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 you talk a lot about a lot of things, but secretly you're hurting on the inside. I, I don't know who you are, but I'm talking to you this morning. Today is the day that you stop trying to win people's approval today. That you just stop that you stop. You're not going to be able to go back and repair things that broke down or things that you messed up. You're not going to always be able to go back and repair that stuff. Don't even try to go back and repair that stuff. Once you've apologized, don't go and apologize no more. How much apologizing can you do? You got to let it go. So today is the day that you become comfortable with the new you, that you become happy with the new you. I, I don't know who I'm talking to, but you're on here. You're a young lady too. And you've been trying to prove that you're a good person to people. Let it go today. If they don't know by now, they ain't going to ever know. If they don't trust you by now, they ain't going to ever trust you. If they're not going to be connected to you now, they're not going to ever be connected to you. But listen, and you might be saying, well, Pastor, you're saying this for a woman. But listen, if you're a man on here and this same thing is happening to you, then here's what you have to do. Take that for yourself as well. Stop trying to, to apologize to people over and over again. You've apologized. Man, I was not a good father in the beginning. I was not. My daughter Ashley is watching me today. I was not a good father. When, when your daughter at a young age, like five or six years old, got to pray and ask God to let my daddy come by for Christmas, man, that tells you that daddy wasn't there. Daddy wasn't a good father at all. Wasn't a good father at all just wasn't one at all because I was too busy running these streets, too busy trying to find me, too busy out here selling drugs, too busy out here about ready to shoot people if, if, you know, if things go wrong, too busy out here trying to play basketball, too busy in these streets and not busy enough being a good father to my children. But when I got saved and gave my life to Christ, I made an about faith, about face, and all of a sudden I turned around and got my life together. I apologize to all of my children for the mistakes that their dad made. They didn't deserve what I did. They didn't deserve me missing out on events in their life and not being there for them. They didn't deserve me not hugging them and me not doing this and me not doing that. They didn't deserve that. They didn't deserve that. I apologize sincerely from my heart to them. But the thing that I did say, I'm not going to let you hold me hostage for the mistakes that I made. I apologize from my heart and I'm not coming back to apologize again. What your daddy is going to do now is be the best father that he can be for you now. Because here's the thing. I can't go back in the past and fix things. The past is the past. You can't go back and fix it, but you can start where you are. And there may be some of you watching me today. You're trying to be your children's friend. Listen to this. You cannot be your child's friend. God never called you to be your child's friend, so stop it. You trying to be your child's friend is trying to apologize to your child for the things that you did not give them, the things that you did not do for them, and when you were not there for them. You can't, you can't be your child's friend. You are always going to be a mother. You are always going to be a father. That's what God has created you to be. You don't want to be your child's friend. I don't want to be my child's friend. What I want to be is my children's father. That's what daddy is. That's what daddy is. When my daughters see me, their daddy is always hugging on them and telling them how much I love them, how much I care about them. When they get my daughters get me in a circle, Marlena, they always asking me, who's the favorite? And they try to put me on the spot. 
And so what I do is I say I love Ashley the most because she's number one. <laughs> yeah, I love Lexus the most because she's number two. I love Treasure the most because she's number three. And they all walk away like, I don't, I don't, I don't like, especially my daughter Treasure. I don't, I don't, I don't, that means I'm last. That means I'm last. No, that just means that I love all three of y'all. Don't try to put me in no pickle. I love all three of y'all. <laughs> My boys are the same way. Love my boys too. But dad can't go back and repeat them as, repeat what he did. Can't go back and apologize anymore. So I want y'all to grab a hold of this. Whoever you are today, grab a hold of this. Life is much better than what you think. It's much better.